Hi, I'm Kirk Davis, and I'm a Senior Solutions Architect on the Microsoft Platform Team at Amazon Web Services. Today, we're going to create and configure an ASP.NET Framework web application to use Amazon DynamoDB to store a session state. So let's dive right in. ASP.NET Framework applications store session information in process, that is, in memory, by default. However, this approach doesn't scale well. After the application grows beyond a single web server, the session state has to be shared between servers. A common solution is to set up a dedicated session state server with Microsoft SQL Server, but this approach has drawbacks. You're left administering another machine, and the database becomes a single point of failure and potentially a performance bottleneck. Another solution, leaving the session state tied to the web application server, means implementing sticky sessions, which introduces complexity and load balancing issues. So the AWS.NET SDK provides an easy way to configure your ASP.NET Framework applications to use Amazon DynamoDB instead. DynamoDB is a fully managed NoSQL database that doesn't require a schema. You just define primary keys for your tables. It's also fully managed. There aren't any servers to set up or updates or patches to worry about. You just choose the read and write capacity you need or enable auto-scaling to have the capacity adjust automatically with demand. DynamoDB is also fast, with single-digit millisecond response times and effectively unlimited storage. The AWS.NET SDK is available as NuGet packages. The package we're going to use today is the AWS.SessionState package. Because ASP.NET Framework sets up session state differently than ASP.NET Core, this package only works as is with ASP.NET Framework apps. We'll also need to edit the web config file. You can get detailed instructions on using the AWS.Session Provider package by going to the link on this slide. For this demo, we're going to create a new ASP.NET Framework web application, configure it to use DynamoDB for session state, and then test it out. So in Visual Studio, I'm just going to create a new ASP.NET web application, .NET Framework. Make sure you pick .NET Framework and not .NET Core. In the template selection dialog box that comes up next, We'll pick MVC. You could also pick web forms or one of the other project types. I'm picking MVC for this demo. While Visual Studio is generating the project, I'm going to create the Amazon DynamoDB table that the session state will be stored in. The AWS.SessionProvider NuGet package will actually create this table for you if it doesn't exist, but we recommend creating it yourself beforehand. So I'm going to switch over to the AWS Management Console and navigate to Amazon DynamoDB using the search box, although it's also showing up in my recent items list right there. OK, DynamoDB, and I'll just click that. So if you don't have any tables in the region you're working in, you'll see this welcome screen. I'll just click the Create Table button to uh, create the table. So in the Create DynamoDB table form, I'll specify the name of the table. I'm going to call it web session state, but you can call it whatever you want. And then for the primary key, enter session ID. So that's actually what the NuGet package is looking for. Leave it as string, um, and you can leave the default setting selected. If you uncheck that little box, which I just did, uh, it'll let you change things like the read and write throughput and auto scaling options. Um, I left it as it is, click create, and the table's being created. So while that's happening, switch back to Visual Studio and configure our project. So right click the project and click Manage NuGet Packages. Click on the Browse tab here and search for AWS.SessionProvider and uh, pick that first one, AWS.SessionProvider NuGet Package, and then we'll click Install to install the latest stable version. This also installs all the required dependencies. OK, so once that's done, I'm opening up the web.config file. In here, I'm going to find the uh, configuration element, and then inside of that, the system.web element. And then we're going to add a new element called session provider inside of that. I'm actually going to switch over to the AWS documentation to get that, uh, and just copy and paste the XML from there. Um, there's a link to this page that I'm switching to on the last a uh, slide that I showed before this demo started. So there's the XML. I'll just copy this and then switch back over and paste it in. So we need to set the AWS profile name, which is the name of the profile tied to the credentials that you've already set up locally. 
Um, in my case, that's demo. We'll also want to set the region. In my case, it's going to be US West 1. Since we pre-created the table, I need to specify the table name that I use. If you use the default table name, which is ASP.NET underscore session state, you could skip this part. But I used web session state, if you remember just from a moment ago. OK, sorry, my typos. Web session state, OK. Now that's really all there is to configure the project to use DynamoDB for session state. But to test this out, I'm going to add some code that reads and writes to session just to show that it's working. So let's make sure our table is created. And we can check to show that there's nothing in it yet. So I'll switch back to the console, click on the Items tab, and click Refresh. So there's nothing in the table right now. So switching back to Visual Studio, I'm going to create some code here to read the number of page views from session. So I'm going to create a views variable. And then I'm going to read that in from session. It's going to be an int. So this will just be a page counter. And since that could be null the first time that we uh, visit the page, I'm going to coalesce that to 0. And then I'll just add 1 to increment the page counter. So next, we need to find a way to store that back in session. So I'm just going to write it back to the session state, the updated value. And then finally, we need a way to pass that value to the MVC view. So I'll just pass it in the view data collection, and I'll call it message. OK. Now we just need to open up the view, which is in the views folder, in the home folder. So I'll open up index.cshtml, and I'll copy and paste the view data message part um, so I don't have a typo. And then I'll add some text. Oops. There we go. I'll add some text like, you have visited this page. And then we'll output that view data, which has our page count value uh, times. And then that'll output the, the number value. OK, so that's really all there is. Now we can build and run our website locally. And our session state will be stored in the DynamoDB table. So I'm going to go ahead and run this locally. It's going to take a second to uh, do the compilation, open up a browser. And I've already created a profile and configured it on my computer with an access key and secret access key that are tied to an IAM user that has permissions to read and write to Dynamo. You can see I'm clicking the home link here, and the page counter is incrementing, so we know it's working. So now let's switch back to our DynamoDB table in the management console and click refresh. And there you can see that there's a new session state record stored there. You can see the create date, the expires. You can actually see the session items, the session state information, but it's not in a human readable format. So that's really all there is to uh, setting up session state in Amazon DynamoDB for an ASP.NET Framework app. In this video, we covered how to configure an ASP.NET Framework application to use Amazon DynamoDB as the backing store for session state. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching, and get coding.